Hey, my name is Walter. I'm the founder and CEO of Decision Vault. In this video, I'll show an example how you can use the Decision Vault sync into Clio Manage of information and then use Clio Manage internal document automation to use that information and generate a document. So I'm going to automate this document, which is an example instruction for caregivers. Um, so here we will have the name of the mother, the name of the father, their phone numbers, a list of the children, and then some short-term guardians we're going to add in. And then at the bottom, I've added some extra example data points that can get merged in. So where does this start? Well, I have this document and we need to put some uh, fields in here. But before we can do that, we have to go set those up in Clio. So I'm going to go into my custom field settings in Clio, matter level custom fields, and I can add some of this information. So I have the mom and the dad will be related to contacts. So we can do, uh, I have here a document father, document mother as a contact select field. So decision vault will, mer will sync over the contacts as a related contact, and then those can get tagged into these contact select custom fields. So that's how the mother and the father will come through. The children, we also have some numbered fields here. There are also contact selects, child one, child three, child four, child five. How did it exactly works? I'll show in a minute. But those children are the placeholders. Short-term guardians, one, two, and three. Um, SG position three, SG position one, position two, contact selects as well. Um, all of these I made not a default field, not required. They don't show up by default, definitely not required um, on your Clio matters, but then they get added. And then the examples below, just to show different ones than just contact selects. Um, common t trust termination age, that's a number field. Um, so let's see if we have that here yet. I don't think so. Let's add that. Uh, common trust termination age is a number field. I believe Clio calls it integer. There you go. The name of the trust as a text I already have. And the signing date was the other field. That's a date field. So now that the fields are there in Clio, let's talk about where that information comes from in Decision Vault. So Decision Vault, when Decision Vault syncs over a Clio matter, it will put the client as the, the client, well, the first person that started the questionnaire in Decision Vault and was entered there, puts them as the client. And then if there's a related uh, spouse, second client, it'll put them as a related contact as, as a second client. But we don't really know whether the mom or the dad started the questionnaire. Um, and then also we don't uh, let you map directly to children. So we need a couple of helper things uh, on the Decision Vault side to set this up. So when you go into your customization settings, um, there's these roles that can get set up. And the ones at the top are actual roles, right? We can have a short-term guardian, a long-term guardian, etc. But down below here, I've added a couple helper roles. So the mother, the father, and the children. And this will make it possible for me to assign these the people from the questionnaire into these roles, and then I can map that over into Clio, and then they end up in this document, right? So I've created these roles now, and to make to show a distinction between the medical power of attorney, which is an actual role, and these helper ones that are really only there to support me in uh, the Clio document automation, I've called these Clio doc, Clio doc mother, father, children. Um, so those are there, and then the other. Uh, I've added those to my design sheet. If you want to learn more about how the design sheet works, there's other videos that go over that. Um, at the bottom here, I've added a section where I can assign the short-term guardians. I can, uh, I can see a list of the children, and then I can assign the contact that's the mother, the contact that's the father, and the contacts those that are the children. Um, and then the other uh, elements in that Word document were the common trust signing date and name the trust. Those are here as well. 
um, the common trust termination uh, age and the name of the trust and the signing date. Those are here. So as part of filling in my design sheet, I can um, put down these data points, the name of the trust and the signing date, and then I can just seamlessly push that over into Clio and use it with document automation. So let's see what um, then finally needs to happen to set up these field mappings. Um, first, I have to map this as part of the Clio integration. So we'll go to Clio integration settings. Here now you'll find um, the matter fields. So for my planning questionnaire, the child one can get mapped to the first child I assign in my, in my role, that helper role for child one. So child two, it's child two, etc. The other helper role was the uh, mother. So we can just put one person in that. You'll see here it goes to nine. That is just the way that Decision Vault will list out different roles. So you can map these. You can map up to push up to nine contacts over that way. Obviously, there's only one here for mother, and then we have one for the father. And then my extra fields, the name of the trust, the signing date, um, those were there. I need to do that common trust termination age, which is right here from my design sheet, the name of the trust, the signing date, and I have only two short-term guardians mapped. So we'll do um, the third one as well. Map that short-term guardian position three. All right, so now I have my custom field set up in Clio. In Decision Vault, I have these helper roles set up and I have questions set up where the information is coming from. And with those two set, I can now make the mapping to say, when we run the sync for a matter under the planning questionnaire, if there is someone assigned in position one for the children, push that contact into the Clio contact select for child one. Same for position four, position five, position three. If there is something filled in into this design sheet field on the common trust termination, take that number and put it into the common trust termination age, matter level custom field in Clio, etc. So the final step to make this easy to set up is to run it once to Clio. Because in Clio, there's a function to look up the different merge fields, but it's easier um, when they already exist for a matter because then I can just look it up. So I have this matter here. Um, I wanna make sure that something is filled in into that uh, name of the trust, the signing date, so that's filled in. Then here under the children, I have the common trust termination. And then at the bottom, I have my short-term guardians, one, two, and three, so they're assigned. I have the mother, that's going to be Mary. I have the father, that's going to be John. And then I'm going to have the children, um, which are Petra, Simon, and Robert. So I'll sign those. Okay, so those are three children. And that's it here now in terms of the information. So now when I run the sync to Clio, I'll sync all these contacts. Now it'll push the information over and it creates uh, and sets up those uh, custom field contact selects on the matter and a different, it fills in a different matter level custom fields that, uh, that we mapped over. All right, so here in Clio now, I have my matter. It's matter 308. I'll remember that to look that up in a moment. And here I, here I have my short-term guardian, position one, position two, position three. I have my three children, the mother, the father, the signing date, the name of the trust, and the termination age. So now that this information's here, I can start to look up the fields to fill in my Word document template. 
So in Clio, we're going to settings and we go to documents. And here I have matter 308. Okay, so first up, let's look for, it seems to have removed the underscores. So I have doc father and it should find doc mother too. There we go. So this is the field code to take and to put over into my work document. So here I have the mom, doc father, name of the father, and I can look up their phone numbers too. And because the nice thing about using the contact selects is you get all the stuff uh, for free, right? Even like you don't have to set anything up like the, the address city, address st street, the full address, all these things are just here. Um, primary phone number, there we go, there's the phone number. So there's, let's put a space in, phone numbers here. And then you also have like the date of birth in a nicely written out version, a nice, um, or just in the short version, etc. cetera. Um, so there's a lot here that just comes out of the box uh, from Clio, which is, uh, which is helpful. Mother name, oh, not name, we were looking for the phone number. I don't think I need number, it can just be phone number. And then the children. So I have doc child one. Child one, there we go. So these are one, two, three, and four, etc. So I'm, I'm just going to change those after I paste them here. And then the date of birth, let's get the, the verbose version. When you do this, the formatting is going to look a little bit <laughs> disjointed um, because of these long field names. But once it's filled in, um, Word will, uh, will correct that and show it the nice way. All right, um, I'll fill in the rest for a second. All right, so I finished putting in all these field names. So this document will look a little uh, messy with all the different codes. But once it's filled in, all that gets swapped out for the actual information that we're going to merge into this. Now, one thing about why we're using contact selects instead of the relationships. So when you look at this matter, Decision Vault will put the description of how this person relates to the client, one or, one or the other, um, into the description of the related contact. And in the past, we've tried to tie that in with um, like document automation. And the problem with that is that it, um, it's different every time. Daughter joined, son joined, stepdaughter Mary. So it, you, from one matter to the next, you don't really, um, it's not specific in saying this is this person every time. So that's why we set up these contact selects um, that have a specific name. And then in that contact selects, Decision Vault can nominate and, and highlight this contact. And then that there, from there, you get the date of birth, the address, the phone number, everything. So what you'll notice at the uh, when you're looking at the different merge fields you can use, it starts with the matter and then the client um, and then the custom fields. And these are the contact selects custom fields we created. But if you roll all the way down, there's a relationship one. And here it says John's brother, Mary's brother. And it's just too different every time. Um, so it's not helpful to like build up your document automation that way. So that's why we're using context selects and then tie them into those helper roles in Decision Vault. Okay, I've created my my document now, so I want to start to upload that as uh, a template. And the place to do that is under Documents, and then here we have the option of Categories and Templates, and then we're going to do a new template, and we're going to do this Clio document. Call it example 
instructions example Clio. We're saving it here. Okay. So now um, I already <laughs> synced over the information, right? So if I, if I refresh my uh, 308 matter, I have my uh, signing date, the name of the trust, the father, the mother, the children, um, the different short term guardians, etc. So when I'm on a particular matter, I can go to documents and I can say do a new one, create it from template. Um, let's go for the Clio example. And I don't need, I can do a PDF and or a Word. And then we'll create it. And it takes a moment for, uh, for it to show up here. All right, I got back from starting a pot of tea. And my document's here. So um, when I now open this PDF, it will have the info filled in. Mary, the phone number, Petra Simon Roberts with the three date of births, um, the three short-term guardians, and then the extra information uh, that we synced over, the common trust, the signing date, the magic unicorn trust. You'll notice that the fonts look a little bit different. And the reason for that is that Clio will look for the field codes, but keep the formatting that you selected over here. So actually to solve for this, I can do select all. We're going to make it, I don't know, Dahoma. And then we're going to make it 12 points. And now if I were to upload and replace this template into Clio, the next time I run it, it'll all look the same in terms of fonts. That's the PDF that got generated. There's also a document here. If I open that one for a moment, here we go. Same thing, but now I can edit it because it's Word. The phone numbers, the mother, the father, the children, the three short-term guardians, including their addresses and phone numbers, and then the extra information. So it sometimes happens that um, information ends up on a next uh, line here, 21 years. Um, so I'll, let's see if we can fix that as well in the um, template. So probably we'll have to turn on the little show, um, what's it called? Show hide, okay. The markers for, uh, for formatting. So I remove this hard enter, the sort of P is an enter. Um, all right, so that is now my new um, template, I saved it. If I go back into Clio under my documents, I can go and replace the template, uh, categories and templates, edit this template, I can replace the file, right? So then the, there's the new one. Not quite sure why I cannot select the old file, maybe because it's the same name, um, but save it as V1 or V2 and upload it as a replacement, and then it'll correct that. So. That's a wrap on this video that shows how you can sync information over from Decision Vault um, over into Clio Manage and then use that in the Clio Manage document automation. Thank you.